Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a professor of construction management and this is project management tips that we're going to be discussing today. In particular, we're going to be focusing in on lean construction. What exactly is lean construction and why is every Everybody talking about it why is it becoming so popular so these are the things that we'll discuss today and if you are new to the channel check my playlists uh, please click subscribe uh, leave a comment if you have a question after this or during this you can put it right there in the comments and I'll try to get back to you okay so let's move on let's talk a little bit about lean construction so I've got all these bullets they're actually from the lean construction Institute Canada website and really when we i like the the terminology that you they used i think it's fairly clear and i'll just give some highlights onto um, a number of these points what lean construction really is about compared to traditional construction methods is it's trying to get more collaboration on our projects it's trying to add value to the customer and the customer is a lot of things customer is a lot of people first and foremost the client the customer that everybody thinks pays the bills okay but anybody can be a customer so you know if i am a consultant and i'm getting something from the contractor obviously then it's like their basic if i need something from them uh, then they're like my client. If I'm giving them something or I'm telling them something, then it's basically like I'm their client. And so the roles will switch back and forth throughout a project. Uh, same with a GC and a plumber, let's say. A uh, plumber needs something from the GC. Uh, so basically, in that case, the GC is their customer. They have to perform something for them and vice versa. The GC needs something from the plumber. They need that installed at a certain date. Plumber needs this area cleaned out so that they can do their work. Um, so we're switching roles all the time. And so what we want to do is add value to the customer at the different levels and of course at the top level. And lean construction can be work under all contract models. It can work really, really well on an integrated project delivery model where basically you've got early collaboration with the different partners and it's really, really well suited for those projects. But any contract model, it can work with design, bid, build, etc. It's just that you might have some more limitations as to what you can and you can't do depending on um, the contract requirements. It's about actually, and that for that, uh, third bullet here control redefined from monitoring results to making things happen so what that really means is traditional we have and you know i'm the king of it i i do a lot of microsoft project critical path schedules if you look at my play playlist how to develop them what's the critical path etc the weakness of that is that it's long term, like by the time you update the schedule and you see that you're delayed, a lot of other things may have happened. So a big advantage of last planner system, which is a system within lean, is that it gets, it's a system about scheduling and collaboration that is done jointly at different levels. And the main premise is as you get closer to the work, you know more about it so you can be more detailed and you can make sure as you are getting closer that you have removed any potential constraints that would prevent you from doing the work when you're supposed to do it it makes for a very agile iterative system and that's what project management is let's just face it we're always iterating we're always adjusting and the better our systems are that allows us to do that the better our projects will be managed. And so Lean is all about that and Last Planner's system within that. And that's another whole video topic there. And if you look on my playlist, I have ones on Last Planner system, etc. Those little components, 5S and other areas. But on a high level, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be very quick, iterative, and have processes of collaboration and fast, fast learning loops where basically we get feedback on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, so we can be pivoting very quickly and we can feedback weeks ahead so that when we get there, we don't have a lot of rework and a lot of delays going on. So that's important. 
It is also about um, coordinating action through pulling and continuous flow. So one of the biggest things I find, and I have fun with it actually, I, I with my degree students, I always have them, you know, they got to go out and find a project. And believe me, in Toronto, it's not hard to find a project. Just walk out the door and there's a project going on. Uh, construction project, and they have to take photos of it over a six-week period. And so inevitably, there will be groups that will come to me at the end of the six weeks. Sir, you know, uh, we've been taking pictures every week, but nothing really happened, right? And that's a perfect example of one of the eight areas of waste in lean construction that is referred to, and that is wait time. Workers waiting for work and work waiting for workers. In that instance, it's work waiting for workers. Stuff is there, it's ready, but the next trade's not there to do it. And so it's either one of the directives that is needed, like a permit or something of that nature, uh, RFI, uh, some sort of approval, submittal, not been reviewed. Something's going on that means that work is waiting for workers. So directives is one of them, right? Predecessor, something that needs to be done is not ready. Well, it looks like it's ready, so that's probably not it. Or the resources. The R is a big one, the resources. So whatever the trade is that was supposed to be there either wasn't scheduled uh, properly or is not coming because they're busy somewhere else and that becomes a big problem. So um, work waiting for workers and workers waiting for work, that's what we're trying to do is improve the flow there. And we're trying to see obstacles, what we call constraints, so we can remove those obstacles so basically the project flows better. Lean always likes to use this analogy of a river with rocks in it, right? And the rocks kind of impede your flow and you're trying to remove those rocks so that the project flows much more smoothly, much more better. And that requires systems that get strong commitments. It's a commitment-based system. It's a system of engagement and collaboration, which is great because we really need to utilize the people the talents that we have on our projects. And traditional methods, autocratic methods, dictatorial methods, they don't work the way they used to. And in really busy environments, they really don't work that well. And so we have a lot of waste in construction. Statistics show there's about 35% waste in construction. And lean is about reducing and eliminating waste over time. That gets people down sometimes when I say, oh, 35%. Yeah, well, it's, everything is a waste, so what's the point? Well, you know what? If you're able to get your waste down from 35 to 30%, you have a huge competitive advantage over a lot of other companies, and you will do well. And then if you keep improving, you will keep that margin of competitive advantage. That's why so many companies are looking at and moving towards lean construction methods because they see it as an op there's not a negative to doing that the negative is it takes time it takes effort and it doesn't happen overnight it's not like we say june 1st we're going to be a lean company it's going to take time it's going to take implementation of different components of it you have to build a culture a way of thinking about things continuous improvement is a thought process on a personal basis and on a business basis. And if you're watching this as an individual, as a lot of my viewers are, and you're just trying to improve yourself through these videos, this is good because a lean way of thinking on projects, you can take to your personal life too. It's about making things more effortless, doing what's essential, doing it with a focused effort. And so that is really helpful, I believe, in both your career and your personal life. So that's why I'm a big proponent of it. And I have been over the last 10 years. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, adding value, coordinating action, pulling. Pulling simply means traditional construction is push. If something's ready, suppliers push it to the site. Uh, Ductwork arrives at the site more than what should be there. And then it's in everybody's way. Have you ever painted a room full of furniture? I hate painting rooms full of furniture. Give me an empty room anytime. And construction sites, if we don't manage them well, it's like we're painting rooms filled with furniture. 
right? So this aspect of just in time, which comes from the lean manufacturing world, that's where the origins of lean construction come from, basically is about not having uh, more inventory than necessary. In lean construction, we do use the term just in time. I kind of tend to like the other term that we use, which is um, last responsible moment, which means you kind of adjust knowing your relationship with the supplier, with the trade partner, uh, dealing with reality. Because we are kind of, we are a highly segmented industry. So we have a lot of different partners and parties in a, in a project. And we don't necessarily have those same ones in all our future projects. So uh, that can become a little bit challenging, but we work towards having that as close as possible to just in time, recognizing that that's probably not a pure reality in the construction world. It's a better reality in the manufacturing. But even there, it's got some issues too that even the Toyota production system made allowances for, like, for example, the computer tip chips in the cars. They had a pretty good stockpile of them during COVID, recognizing that that could be a real bottleneck for them. And they recognized that ahead of time. Uh, what's the one thing in their supply chain that would be really difficult to get? And they figured that one out. So, and that's lean thinking right there, thinking ahead that way. Okay, so decentralizing decision making, that's that bullet down here. That's about giving the four persons a lot more input to the process, especially on the short term. You're trying to make sure that the short term is really clearly defined and you want inputs from the people that do the work. And four persons, tradespersons, they have a, particularly the four persons, crew leaders, have a really good understanding of how long it takes to do something over the next two to six weeks. They're really good on that time frame. Maybe not so good on like what we have to do over the next year, but really good on what's coming up. And so having their inputs in collaboration in the development of those schedules is important. And it gets a lot more than I can do on this video, but I did just want to give you this introduction to it. So the six tenets of lean are optimize the whole. And that simply means that we get people working together to try to meet the time, cost, quality goals for the project. Instead of everybody optimizing for themselves, which unfortunately with design, bid, build, everybody tends to want to do because people want to get in and get out and make their most profit. But we try to make the long view, the project, the most important element. So we optimize for the project. So one trade doesn't bring all their stuff and wreak havoc on the rest of the site. That's push. Pull is we're bringing it as we need it. Generating value. And we said for the customer and who the customer is at the high level, but also with each other. Eliminating waste. We want to get rid of waste, right? And we're looking at it in all ways, shapes and forms. Continuous improvement. It's a different mindset. Thinking differently. How do we improve uh, continuously? It really is a different mindset. And trying to instill that in the culture of the project, instill that in the culture of the company, it takes time and it takes effort, but it's well worth it. And it's well worth it for you too. Well, you're watching this video, so you're into continuous improvement. I can see it right now. And don't forget to leave a comment. And respect for people. We've got to have that respect. In construction, we have not been the best at that uh, over our history. We have gotten somewhat better, at least in, I would say, in uh, my jurisdiction over the last uh, five years. But I think we have a long way to go there. And so this is one of the main tenants and it's a big tenant. The whole inclusion aspect of DEI is built into that. We're not going to get, we're not going to improve as an industry unless we really have respect for people. And that's what I, I really like about Lean too. That's right at the center of the six tenants. So I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to Lean. I'll be doing more of them. And I'm Tom Stevenson. Don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.